Hey guys, tonight we're going to be cooking on some cast iron on the Weber over some hard lump charcoal. What are we cooking? Skinless, boneless chicken thighs and we're going to be making a honey butter glaze. Stick around. Okay guys, as I mentioned, uh, we're gonna be doing this over some hard lump charcoal. And we're gonna be cooking on some cast iron. So let's step over here to the Weber. Let me show you what we're gonna do there. All right guys, today we're gonna be using some of this lump charcoal with some royal oak tumbleweeds to get them started. And I'm not really worried about an even dispersion of heat, but I need to get rid of some of this stuff because I've had it a long time. And so these uh, tumbleweeds are really easy to use. You just toss them in there, light them. put your chimney down there you go that's all there is to it so I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can go pick up your own tumbleweeds online so you don't have to break that quarantine we're all freaking out about let your fingers do the walking all right guys before we go any further here I'd really appreciate it if you guys smash that subscribe button ring that bell so you don't miss a thing so as I mentioned we're gonna be doing a honey butter glaze and we're going to be spicing it up a little bit with some soy sauce. We'll, so we'll do that in a little bit uh, here. So what I want to do is get this chicken ready. Hi guys. So here we are. Now I'm going to be washing my hands about after every step here. What I did is uh, I went to Lowe's and I got myself one of these box rags or towels or disposable so that I don't have to waste all the precious tissue that's inside the house. So do your household a favor, get something you can throw away that's cheap that you don't mind discarding. What I'm going to do here first is, in this really meaty area, I'm going to score them a little bit. And the reason I'm doing that is because there's some thinner areas of this chicken that's going to cook faster. So I want this to cook about the same rate, and I'd like it to char up a little bit better. Just a couple crisscrosses should do it. Some of them are smaller than others, so it probably doesn't need as much scoring. It's all right, a little bit there, a little bit there, and I think that's pretty good. And there's a lot of little bits of fat here too. Um, you know, I'm gonna be putting these in the cast iron, so I'm not really gonna worry about uh, getting too much of that fat off. I'll throw it away, but otherwise, I think this is how I'm gonna do it. Okay, so since these are already moist and delicious and flavorful. I'm not going to really need any oil or any kind of schmear on these at all. What I am going to use, I'm going to use some of this Uncle Steve shake that uh, Uncle Steve sent me. Again, I'll leave a link down in the description for some of this. This is his original Uncle Steve shake. And what we're going to do here is just really lightly go across the top. Not going to need much. This stuff is really tasty. So I'm going to flip them around a little bit on the back. Again, it doesn't need much. Really, I'm doing this more for texture and color, but uh, you'll see what we're up to here in a little bit. All right. Doesn't that look beautiful? That color from the uh, Uncle Steve Shakes. Uncle Steve's shake is phenomenal. Get you some of this. You won't regret it. And I am kind of thirsty. So what do we got here? Oh, what is this? This is a Godiva white chocolate martini made with vanilla vodka and some yummy things. All right, thanks babe. Mm. All right, oh man. What kind of martini is this again? Uh, white chocolate, Godiva white chocolate. Has vanilla vodka. Mm. White chocolate, uh, Godiva liqueur. Mm. Chocolate sauce. This is tasty. So, uh, hey, I'm gonna down this. I'll meet you over by the Weber, which as you can see, maybe you can't see it. It's going pretty good right here. So we're gonna head over that way in a minute and get the cast iron ready. Mm. So as you can see here, this uh, 
chimney is going pretty good. It's hard lump charcoal, doesn't always get really ashy like the uh, chemically altered uh, briquettes. So when you're seeing red hot coals just underneath, it's time to pour it in. There we go. Move it around a little bit. Okay. Get yourself some really long tongs here that are all metal and kind of move them out a little bit. Okay. Now this is going to get really hot. Okay. So what we want to do here is put the grate on. Okay, you hear that crackling? That's because it's hard, hard wood. There we go. Yeah. Now it's as simple as just taking your uh, cast iron skillet. Now, what you want to do here is get that cast iron skillet pretty much damn near really hot. Now, one of the little tricks that I learned with preparing a skillet for some chicken is it get the skillet up to temperature first. Pour in a little bit of oil of your choice here. In this case, it's just canola oil. And then put the chicken in. That's going to form a barrier and do kind of a quick little non-stick surface. One of the little devices I have here is this digital instant read thermometer. So it's looking like it's already pretty well up there. So I'm going to take this lid off as well. When you're doing a cook like this, there's no need for a lid. It's all about getting that chicken seared in there. And this is already hot enough as it is. So I'm pouring some oil. All right. Now, my Weber here isn't level, so I'm going to have to be turning this pan a little bit, but that won't take long. I figure about three to four minutes a side. So I'm going to go thicker side down. I'm just going to go right around the pan here. There we go. One of the things about determining when it's ready to be flipped over is that these are going to stick initially to the pan. Now eventually once they form a nice crust, they're going to release themselves and that's when they're ready to flip. So don't, don't turn them too soon because you're going to rip meat away and you're going to ruin that piece of chicken. All right, so that pan isn't as hot as I thought it would get. It's staying a nice 325 to 350, depending on where you uh, take the temperature at. Not bad at all. That's good. And I'm going to keep moving it around because the Weber ain't level. And I, want, I don't want too much oil in one spot. All right guys, as you can see, color looks wonderful. Only had to flip them one time. I'm gonna let these brown up on the other side and then take them off and make the glaze. Okay, these are looking really good. Beautiful color. So we're gonna take these off and set up our glaze. Definitely done their job. All right, so this won't take long at all. Okay, now you can see in this pan here, you know, there's a lot of, little bit of grease, a little rendered down here and there. Um, I want to keep all this. There's not a whole lot of oil, which is great. If there's a lot more oil, I'd probably get rid of it. First thing, I'll put in a couple tabs of butter. You know what I mean by a tab? I'm talking about like that. Yeah, one more. There we go. Let's 
see where I'm going with this? I want to kind of stir that around a little bit. Now I'm going to get some gloves on because that cast iron is still hot. As it should be. Okay, so what I'm, I'm going to start doing now is this butter's coming down. Whew, I need a second pair of gloves. All right, so as that butter's melting, I'm going around, I'm just scraping off some of that goodness here. And now we're ready for that uh, delicious honey here. There we go. Okay, you want to get all that honey? There we go. Then, you want to get uh, well, about that much soy sauce. About a half cup. Keep stirring. Okay. This is the glaze. This, this is what you want to uh, get all frothy. Yeah, got a little pit fire in there. Don't worry about it. It'll burn out. Okay. It's ready now. Really carefully, just start putting the chicken in there. turn. So it's looking a little darker than I uh, thought it would look. Maybe we'll change the name of this to Blackened Chicken Thighs with a honey butter glaze. Alright guys, a little bit more uh, charred than I wanted them to get. I think that the uh, Maybe I had a little too much butter in there and the butter burned a little bit. It doesn't smell like that, but I think my uh, honey to butter ratio was off. I should have more honey and not as much butter. So anyway, let me go ahead and plate these up with some rice. Thanks, baby. Looks good to me. Let's go with uh, this piece here. There. Oh, that one. That's a crispy critter right there. <laughs> oh boy. And uh, we'll try this piece here. All right. Okay, before I cut into this disaster, I'll show you what it looks like. Definitely a little crispy. But you know what? We haven't cut it open yet. Maybe it's all right on the middle. Okay. Tastes like barbecue chicken. Mm. You got a piece right down here in the middle. Ooh, that just fell apart. All right. Mmm. Well, the rice tastes good. Let's try this chicken. All right, guys. Yeah, this is proof that. Uh, not everything comes out good all the time. And, uh, you know, it definitely tastes like barbecue that I had a few years ago at a, uh, at some, a picnic that I went to, and I won't name names. Might have been me making it, I don't know, but it wasn't that good. And this definitely ain't that good. And I wasn't even trying to barbecue, I was using cast iron. You know, it's not bad. I've paid for worse barbecue. I've paid for worse chicken. I keep calling it barbecue, but you know, I think uh, my first mistake was cast iron was too hot. 
Um, definitely got a little crispy critter here. Kind of has the consistency of beef jerky almost. Mm. Yeah. I would call this a fail. It's not bad, but uh, I wouldn't serve it to my family. Things I would have done differently, I would have done this indoors on a stainless steel pan, less butter, more honey. Right there, that was my biggest mistake. Um, I wanted to show off and bring it, bring it outside on a Weber and use cast iron. But uh, I think you'd be all right using cast iron, but uh, not over hard lump charcoal. Hmm. Rice came out good. All right, guys. So this is proof that not everything's going to come out perfect every time. But you know, some pieces came out better than others. No fault on the Uncle Steve's shake. I can taste the Uncle Steve's shake even through all that honey and burnt butter. And it tastes great. He's got some great line of rubs. Go check out his link in the description. Be sure to check out the description for links to some of the products we're using in these videos. Yes, we are an Amazon affiliate. No, it's not going to cost you anything more to follow one of our links and get some products, barbecue products and other supplies. It just helps to support the channel. And as always, if you liked what you've seen here, please tap that subscribe button. Ding that bell so you don't miss a thing. And uh, I'm going to go eat what's left.